So my wife and I just got back from a western hunting trip from the east coast all the way to the heart of the Rocky Mountains. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to go over part of what our hunting rig was to go from, to basically do a 5,000 mile round trip uh, and be prepared for as much of the things that I could think of. So we took our little camper, uh, uh, Scrappy, with us, which is our homemade camper, and we towed it behind a, a, a camper van. And it's, most of what it served was a, it was a, really a utility use of carrying all the items that we needed. And what I wanted to do was go over all the different things that I took with me. And so if you can see all the way around me, these are the things that were inside the camper. And it goes from, from pretty much from here all the way around to over here. So what I want to do is I want to go over why I chose to take these things and, uh, and, and how it helped me during this trip and why I thought I needed it. But first, uh, let's talk about at least a couple of things that are in here. Um, this little, our scrappy camper contains, uh, really it's a 100 watt solar on top of it and I have a deep cycle battery on the inside. And inside of, uh, and it has a little controller for it. So it's not a massive controller, but it did maintain this battery and our camper van battery while we were out there. Um, inside of the camper, inside this little uh, lift up storage area that's inside here, there is a, uh, a spare tire. And I've got tire chains that are in there. And I know that it's still summertime, but if we got into some sloppy mud, I'd be able to throw them on the vehicle. It would give me a little bit more traction. But you can kind of see that it's it, right now it's unfinished, and uh, but it was just simply for storage on this trip. Uh, it also housed the uh, house, but it also it also carried the uh, TW two hundred on the front on the rack that we had built on that before the trip, uh, which is uh, up in here, and we've got a video on on that one and uh, how we built it. Uh, but it survived the five thousand mile trip. So. Let's talk about the things that I've got and, and what I took with me. So, what we've got here, we've got these little exercise mats, and these are great for laying out outside your camper door. Um, they uh, will keep bugs away, they'll keep dirt out of your camper, uh, and also, if you need to work on a vehicle, work on something, get under something, they're good for being able to lay down on. Uh, in addition to that, boot trays are something else that you can, you can put inside your camper, you can put inside your tent and uh, keep the floor and keep the inside clean. Um, we've also stood on them when we're outside and taken our, uh, our hobo shower outside to keep our feet clean. So, um, sliding over, you can see we've got the, the TW200. We also carried inside here, we carried a large rack. Now, I'm going to make one that's smaller that's gonna go with the camper, but for this particular trip, we used a larger rack to get the motorcycle on and off. All right, so, I've got a 20 pound LP tank and I carried it with me. I carried it, of course, in this container so I wouldn't tip over this old milk crate. And this was part of um, our head boiling. So in addition to this, I brought somewhat of a canning, canning um, a pot and a burner so that I could boil the head if we were to get something. Because in North Carolina is a is not a CWD state and because of that we needed to boil the head to be able to transport it really across any state line. So we had the ability to be able to boil uh, the head of, and this was a pronghorn, pronghorn hunt, the head of the pronghorn uh, if we had gotten successful. Uh, in addition to that we also used this to heat water um, for bathing, cleaning, uh, just because we had a creek that was nearby. So. That and I also had some cleaning ability to clean it up. Um, so, along with that, would go with uh, meat preparation. So, I took a large, uh, uh, somewhat of a large cutting board and this uh, stainless steel bowl so that I could put meat in and keep it clean when I was cutting it. Uh, we also had a water container um, that we took uh, potable water with so we could actually drink water uh, at, that, we were, that we brought from the store or from our house. Um, salt, so this is plain salt, it's non-iodized salt, so if we actually got an antelope, 
I was going to preserve the hide, so I was going to salt it and put it in a uh, construction or a, a trash bag. Uh, so moving on, um, we've got a Coleman burner um, that we used for cooking while we were outside. There was some small, you know, some small fishing that happened, so we've got some fishing equipment. Um, and then we've got a collapsible uh, camping table that we took with us. Uh, and it, it served for our meals, it served for just being able to you know, pull a computer out, it served as uh, meat preparation once we, uh, once we had an antelope in camp. Then, now I got three coolers here. Uh, two of the rotoplast and one just cheapo cooler. Uh, we brought two of these because there was a possibility that we would have um, meat from two different antelopes uh, and or pronghorn and so you really could eliminate one of these but the reason why I brought this one is because during our trip we were out um, we were a good ways from any kind of store and we needed to be able to transport fresh ice to our other cooler so uh, as our ice melted slowly we drained it off we needed to add more ice to it so this was our one-time um, store run for additional ice during the trip. Uh, and if they also empty, they will, uh, they'll also carry stuff with them. I will say that uh, one trick that you can do is I actually froze bottles of water and put them in the cooler before we left to do two things. One, we would be able to drink that water, and two, it would pre-cool the coolers. If you just throw ice in these things when they're warm, they'll just melt down and they really won't do, they won't preserve that ice as long. So, Rolling on, we brought a 10 by 10 uh, shade tent that we used outside of our, uh, in our camp for shade. Um, and from there, I have a bow hunting backpack. So this, this actually carries my bow. This is my emergency kit. Now, my emergency kit list is uh, available on the uh, blog, which I'll give you a link to. So this is all the little things that I might need if I was to get into trouble out there. Um, some walking sticks. Of course, this was inside the camper just in case I had a, a problem and it was raining and uh, my wife would be able to hold this over my head while I was working under something and it was uh, to be able to hold, get water off me you know, just because it's a larger umbrella. <clears throat> so I do have a larger meat shelf backpack. So uh, hunting out in the backcountry, uh, there was a possibility we'd have some meat that was a good distance away from the, the roadway. Uh, and in one case, I was about 1,500 feet above the, the valley floor, which is where my motorcycle was. And if and I was in a uh, active spot and stock with a pronghorn, and if I had gotten him up there, this would have been the way I would have carried the meat down, would be with this backpack. So, all right, and the other side starts with a hunting blind. There was a water hole that we were hunting over, so I did have a hunting blind that I carried out there with me. So inside some of these containers, uh, boots, additional tarp. This is just uh, to keep things clean, to cover things up. Um, we did have, uh, got some rope in here, and this was some clothesline that we, that we used to dry our clothes when we washed them. Um, and we also held down our shade tent uh, with some of it because the wind was, was picking up and it was trying to pick it, take it away. This, uh, I've got a, a waterproof backpack cover. I also use this to sit on a lot of times when I'm, when I'm sitting somewhere. Um, so getting more into hunting stuff, uh, of course my boat case was in there, um, my bino harness, my binos, a uh, GPS um, and a and a uh, rangefinder. And I need to talk about this in another video about what kind of hack I had to do. You can see I've got duct tape all over this thing in order to get it to work. Um, so we took uh, game cameras with us, backup batteries, and this is where I keep a number of little cards in here uh, when I change them out. So this is an old uh, camera case that I just store them in. So. I also took a, uh, a target, and this is one that uh, I've recycled a number of times, and another good use for this, and I'll just carry it over here, 
you can actually use these as a stepping aid to get into a camper. So we use this to get into our into our camper van because we were raised up off the ground quite a bit. So of course my bow and accessories and my uh, my releases are in here. Um, while we were out there, before we left, I knew that we had time that we had in the uh, in camp. So I printed off some pieced together pronghorn and picked up some cardboard out at a at a Walmart out in in uh, before we went into the uh, to the backwoods areas and glued this up so that I could carry it around with me. You can see it does pretty good um, as far as giving that silhouette. And I, I, and I hid behind this and, uh, and actually walked with it uh, to, uh, to fool them if they were to spot me before I spotted them. And it almost worked at, uh, at one point. So I had the glue to be able to glue them together. Um, another Tupperware container. And it's got a number of things in here. So if you're going to be butchering meat or, uh, or quartering out an animal, uh, here's some plastic that uh, you can put on the ground so that you don't get it dirty. Um, game bags, uh, garbage can or garbage bags, uh, a bunch of different rubber gloves so that you can keep the meat clean. I have an additional uh, first aid kit in here, uh, bug spray. Um, and so these are all a bunch of little extra things, extra toilet paper. Uh, and even an extra, this is, so if I needed to cut anything, I do have a little blade in here. So, uh, continuing on, I had a uh, gas can. So this was for the generator, which I've got the generator here. Um, and it was also for the motorcycle. Uh, so, okay, so this is our, our tool section or our repair section. Um, in this little duffel bag, I have some coveralls and some knee pads and I'm actually on one of my pads that I could use in case I needed to get under a vehicle to do any repairs. Um, so over here I have a, a drill kit that has a, a drill and a impact driver. Uh, so this could be used for getting the bolts off of the vehicle. This could be used for any kind of repairs and we actually use this on a repair in the camper uh, to uh, tighten some screws that were loosened up during the trip. Uh, also has a charger and the battery which we could charge off of a small inverter that was attached to our battery that's in the camper. Uh, and we have a work light that we could plug into the inverter that could either run off of the battery or off the generator. Um, of course we've got jumper cables um, and in our case we have our, our vehicle has house batteries, it also has a battery for the engine, and we've got a battery in the camper. So uh, we were pretty good on not being able to uh, start our vehicle if we had an emergency and, the thing, and it died on us. Uh, we also could switch them out if we had to. Uh, additional tools would be electrical tools. Uh, this is a code reader that I use for um, reading codes that the engine might throw. Uh, this has happened on uh, one occasion where the where the vehicle threw an engine code and it was running rough and uh, not on this trip but on a previous trip where we could find out what part we needed and then actually search ahead on our on our route and be able to pick that part up and install it while we're on the trip uh, so that voltmeter uh, wire splicers that's a good thing to be able to have with you uh, in addition to that uh, just general tools allen wrench sets uh, for both metric and uh, English units, um, safety goggles, uh, pliers, these are needle nose pliers, vice grips, um, screwdrivers, adjustable wrenches. I've got a ratchet set here. Uh, this is a plug, uh, tire plug set. So if I was to get a nail or something in a tire, I could be able to fix it while I was out. And I also carry a hand pump with me uh, so I don't have to rely on uh, electricity to be able to pump up a tire. Um, in addition to that, we have a collapsible shovel. We have, this is actually our toilet tool, believe it or not. We dig our hole with this and then we stick this in the ground and you put your toilet paper on the end. Small hatchet and a machete. So all this stuff may seem like it's an overkill, but 
on a 5,000 mile trip. And then in addition to that, we were 26 miles off of a paved road. We were 23 miles from cell service. Um, we didn't have the ability to be able to just run to the store for anything. The closest gas station was 40 miles. The closest Walmart was 200 miles. So it's not like you can just go pick up any kind of thing that you need. So we need to be able to have everything with us and also be prepared for emergencies that might happen. So uh, in addition to our vehicle that we are also using as a camper, we had a second vehicle. This is a dual sport motorcycle. So I had a second vehicle that was with me. This was a primary mode of transportation while at camp. And, and I actually used it for almost 400 miles of backcountry roads. Um, so the things that we were prepared for, we were prepared to be able to process meat. We were prepared to be able to keep our meat cool once we got it. We were prepared to be able to get additional ice. I was prepared to be able to cart the meat from a remote location to the camp. Okay, so in addition to being able to carry our meat, we need to be able to hunt it. So we had our, our blind and our hunting gear. That was also something that we took. Um, and then in addition to that, we had additional storage uh, with, with a number of various items, uh, gallon freezer bags. That's something else that I didn't mention before, to be able to put your meat in and to keep it out of the water that, that happens when the ice melts. Um, especially when you're putting in warm meat into a cool cooler, uh, it'll melt the ice fast. So you want to make sure that water doesn't touch that meat and, and spoil the meat. Uh, we had gas that we, need, that we were going to use for both our generator and our and our transportation while in the backwoods, and we had the ability to repair most anything that was thrown at us. So I have this list somewhat generalized that you can be able to download and use and modify for your own purposes. Uh, so I'll put that link down below. So watch for more videos on our hunting and our camping, and we'll actually have some stuff on uh, who we're calling Scrappy here uh, pretty soon. So be sure to subscribe for uh, videos on the build out for Scrappy, the uh, back country camper uh, and also uh, I'll put a link down below for all the items or at least a general list of the items that I that I took with me on a uh, East Coast to Western Mountain hunting camping trip uh, okay well thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one